Okay, so in this video we want to look at problems involving triangles. Um, and so what we really just want to do here is combine together all of the work we've looked at, all of the different rules we've looked at, um, and combine them together in a more problem solving style. So we might end up with right angled triangles, in which case we're going to use Sokotoa. We might end up with non right angled triangles, in which case the sine rule or the cosine rule are going to be useful to us. So it's about having to make that level of choice here as well. So we're just going to work through a series of examples. So example one, find the length of a shadow, correct to one decimal place, cast by a 4.5 metre flagpole when the angle of the sun to the horizontal is 63 degrees. Okay, so let's going to need a diagram before we do anything. We've got horizontal ground, we've got a vertical, it should say vertical, but I think we can assume that it was installed correctly and isn't falling over. All right, so we've got horizontal ground, we've got a vertical flagpole, so horizontal and vertical makes for a right angle. So we've got the sun shining up here. The sun causes the flagpole to cast a shadow. So that's the shadow down there. Okay, and that, so that's the length we want to find. Let's call that X. Um, we know the flagpole is four and a half meters tall. Okay, so we know that. And we know that the angle of the sun to the horizontal is 63 degrees. That's probably not the best example, to be honest, because the angle of the sun to the horizontal is pretty complicated. I think it is about the angle that the, the, that the sun's rays make with the horizontal when it's forming that shadow is 63 degrees. So this is 63 degrees here. It is not a very well phrased question. Um, but essentially we've got sun's rays horizontal, the angle between those two things is 63 degrees. Okay, so we've got a right angled triangle. So we don't need sine rule or cosine rule. Um, if we think about the 63 degrees, that makes this the opposite side length. This is the adjacent side length, opposite and adjacent TOA. So we need tan. So tan of 63 degrees equals opposite, which is 4.5 over adjacent, which is our unknown value. You could get your CAS to solve that for you, or you could do that rearrangement yourself to get X on its own and then go to the CAS without needing solve. So X, multiplying both sides by X, X times tan 63 equals four and a half. And so X equals four and a half divided by tan of 63. So having done that arrangement by myself, I don't need to solve. I can just do 4.5 divided by tan of 63. Control enter. Oh, sorry. Wasn't tan, I accidentally chose the wrong one. Let's go again. 4.5 divided by tan. Sorry, I pressed across one too many times. Tan of 63. Control enter. And so x is approximately two point accuracy, one decimal place, 2.3 meters. So the length of the shadow is approximately 2.3 meters. That makes sense. I've actually drawn my diagram incorrectly because I wasn't I didn't think about it. This the 63 degrees means that this angle up here is only going to be, because they have to add up to 90, so this angle up here is only going to be, what's that going to be, 27 degrees. And so therefore actually the triangle looks more like this. And so it makes sense that the shadow is smaller than the height of the fly pole. Okay, um, so set up a diagram. If it's a right angled triangle, don't overcomplicate it by using sine or cosine rule. Sokotoa is fine. Right, question two. A person is hoping to swim directly across a straight river from point A to point B, a distance of 215 metres. The river carries the swimmer downstream so that she actually reaches the other side at a point C. If the line of her swim, AC, makes an angle of 67 degrees with the riverbank, find how far correct to the nearest metre downstream from point B she finished. Okay, so straight river. She wants to swim from A to B which is directly across the river. That's the way she wants to go from A to B. And it says that from A to B, that is a distance of 215 metres. However, there's a current. Okay, Let's say the current is going this way. So when she gets in the water and tries to swim straight across, she gets swept a bit further down and she ends up landing here at C. The line of her swim uh, makes an angle of 67 degrees with the riverbank. So this is 67. 
find how far, correct, to the nearest metre downstream from point B she finished. So this is the distance that we're trying to find. Now again, we've got a straight river and she was trying to string, swim directly across, so that's a right angle there. This is a right angled triangle. We do not need sine rule or cosine rule. So I'm going to use Sokotoa. If I'm interested in the 67 degrees, that makes this the opposite and the x is the adjacent. So again, this is going to be tan. So it's tan of 67, sorry, tan of 67 degrees equals opposite 215 over adjacent, which is x. Multiplying both sides by x and then dividing both sides by tan of 67. means that x is 215 divided by tan, oops, do it again, tan of 67, control enter, 91 point, uh, correct to the nearest meter, so it's approximately 91 meters. Um, as I said in the previous example, you can just solve, so we could have done menu 3, 1, solve tan, oh, oh sorry, tan of 67 equals 215 on x, 4x, control enter, sorry, to get the decimal. Um, but personally I find with Sokotoa it's easier to do the rearrangement myself, but if you're not comfortable with that, you can always just solve. So x is 91 metres, so she ended up swimming, um, landing a further 91 metres further down the riverbank because the current swept her along. The question could have asked you how far did she actually swim, in which case you'd have been finding this distance and you'd have used um, opposite and hypotenuse which is sine, um, etc, etc. But key thing is right angle triangle, don't need to use sine or cosine. All right, angles of elevation and depression. Um, an angle of elevation, angles of elevation and depression are always measured relative to horizontal. Okay, so if that's horizontal, angle of elevation is how far up from horizontal, angle of depression is how far down from horizontal. I find students have no problem with the angle of elevation, but they tend to get the angle of depression wrong. They tend to talk about this as being the angle of depression when it should be relative to the horizontal. Okay, a man stands on a cliff which is 28 metres above sea level. He observe a, observes a boat two kilometres out to sea. Find the angle of depression to the nearest degree from the top of the cliff to the boat. Okay, so let's have a cliff cliff, there's a man on the cliff, the cliff is 28 metres tall, 28 metres above sea level, out to sea we have a boat, okay, um, and he observes the boat which is two kilometres out to sea. Now we're going to need to use the same units and so we're going to call that 2,000 metres, okay, so that's 2,000 metres. So we've got cliff and sea level, right angles, horizontal and vertical, and we know 2,000 metres and 28 metres, all right, and we want to find the angle of depression. So angle of depression is relative to the horizontal, so if that's horizontal, that is the angle that we want, the angle of depression. Now there's two ways that we could do that. We could instead find this angle in here and then take it away from 90 to find theta or we could use our angle properties because we have parallel lines here and so that angle down there is the same as the angle of depression we want at the top. And again we have opposite and we have adjacent so again we have tan. We find quite often in application problems it involves tan because usually we are able to measure horizontal and vertical distances where we don't tend to know the diagonal distances. Okay, so tan of theta is opposite, which is 28, over adjacent, which is 2,000. Solving for theta, theta is inverse tan of 28 over 2,000. And putting that into our calculator, inverse tan of 28 over 2,000. We expect it to be quite small if we think about those distances. Um, and we want our angle to the nearest degree, so actually to the nearest degree, that's just one degree. 
Okay, I was going to say something else there, and I forgot what it was. That's okay. It'll come back to me. Oh, um, we could have solved rather than do the rearranging using inverse tan ourselves, but it's quite cumbersome because we're trying to find an angle, so you would need to put in that um, restriction uh, after the solve function. So we could do, you know, tan of x equals 28 on 2000, and we're solving that for x, but we would need, given that, 0 is less than or now we actually know this time it has to be between 0 and 90 because we've already got 90 degrees in the triangle so x has to be somewhere between 0 and 90 control enter so it's a lot more tedious um, doing the solving yourself using inverse tan is easier and then there's nothing to solve you're just typing that into your CAS. Okay question 4 Two buildings are 50 metres apart. Building A is 60 metres tall and building B is 85 metres tall. Find to the nearest degree the angle of, angle of elevation from the rooftop of building A to the rooftop of building C. Sorry, that should say B. So we've got building A is shorter than building B. Okay, so we've got two buildings. We've got horizontal ground and vertical buildings. Two buildings. Okay, this one is 85 metres. This one is 60 metres. The two buildings are 50 metres apart. So this distance here is 50. And we want to find to the nearest degree the angle of elevation from the top, from roof, sorry, from the rooftop of building A to the rooftop of building B. Okay, so if we're at the edge of this rooftop and we're looking up to this rooftop we want the angle of elevation so that is relative to horizontal so that that's the angle we want all right so if I actually draw in that line I've got a right angled triangle in there now we know that this horizontal distance is 50 and we can work out this vertical distance it's going to be the difference between 85 and 60 so it has to be 25 meters and again, we've got tan because we've got the opposite and the adjacent. Tan of theta is opposite over adjacent. And so theta is inverse tan of opposite over adjacent. Inverse tan of 25 over 50. Control enter. And we want our answer to the nearest degree, so that's approximately 27 degrees. Okay, so they were all examples where we came up with right-angled triangles, um, so this work will practice that. We're going to be looking at further applications including bearings and some other things which will bring in our non-right-angled triangles as well. So we've got some questions from exercise 18e and then some additional problems in appendix B of your booklet.